by sure. And we are here in the shop down in the grandstand this morning. Already a bit of a buzz around. You did yeah. say it was going to be mm, uh, quite exciting around here. Lots of messages on the Manx Radio TT Facebook page. Noel says, this is going to be a magic piece of nostalgia recreated today. So sorry I'm going to miss it. No better man than John to bring this bike to life. Chris, remind us what's happening today. Well, I can tell you Noel Johnson. is actually Noel Johnson for Nielsen Grand Prix, who's the clerk of the course there. So, Noel, good morning to you and Anne. Hope you're well. And uh, shame you're not here. You might be here. You never know. You might just, sh- uh, might just rock up at some point. Coming up in the next 10 minutes, we're going to have the Met on. We're going to have the, the Met office just give us an update on the weather today. It looks all right here at the moment. If you aren't aware what's happening today on the Isle of Man, it's going to be a rather special day because it's celebrating 40 years since Mike the Bike. As the, God, I've just got one of those pictures of those white hats with Mike the Bike on it in my head now. And I'm sure there'll be a few of those popping around today since Mike did that on, on that day, 1970. I just, just can't wait to see it a bit later on. John McGinn is, is going to be riding Mike's bike. Uh, Steve and the guys are all prepared. And Steve, we were just talking off air a little bit. And it wasn't just about the TT that year. There was other races that he did around the UK. Tell us a bit about those other races because that kind of gets a little bit forgotten, doesn't it? It. it does, and, and one of the things that happened, and people who follow this thing probably know about it, the bike blew up as it went over the line. So he only just managed to get over the line, and it, it all blew up. And and then we had a noise test, and we'd had some problem in practice that the noise man said our bikes were too noisy. And so we'd put some silencers and things on, which we made out of old bits of old Triumph Bonneville to try and quieten it down. So as it got... To, as Mike crossed the line, shut the engine off. <coughs> it had blown up, but we didn't know. And the noise man came up to me and he said, the bike won't start, will it? So I said, oh, yeah, the bike will start. That's all right. He said, no, no, the bike won't start, will it? Because uh, he didn't be the w- want to be the one to say the bike was excluded. It had been lynched. He'd never got off the island <laughs> alive. <wouldn't he? laughs> so we just put the bike in the back of the van and, uh, and Mike was riding at the Mallory Park meeting the following weekend. And so when we got back home to Manchester and I started preparing in the workshop, the bike, the engine had blown up. And so it only just made it. So we had to put the, the spare engine back in again. And we went to Mallory Park. And although we felt Mike had a great chance in the Isle of Man, Mallory Park was different. It's the shortest, tightest little circuit in the Isle of Man. Real scratches circuit. And, you know, Ron Haslam and all the top people in the, in the day were there. And, and Mike went out and won that one as well. Mm. And that was really against all expectations. And then we went on to do some other race meetings at uh, Donington Park. And he was leading the race there by quite a quite a, um, a long way. And he hadn't realised that I think probably Roger Marshall or somebody had behind him had fallen off. And he tr- was trying hard to make a last lap, a uh, fast lap, and he fell off as well. Ah. So Mike fell off there. And it was a rarity. Yeah, it was a rarity. Yeah, well, was a rarity. And he he apologised profusely. Ah, okay. <laughs> yes, he did. But you've got to think back, you know, when, you know, at the entry list. Can you imagine it being, being like a cl- at the race you get to the list? Oh, the run hasn't been... Miss Mike, what? You'd be like, oh, God, I'm that engine. It's kind of like when John had to do the light, uh, to go to around the UK to get your signatures for license. These guys all rocked up with the transit vans and stuff. And then, you know, blah, blah, blah. blah. John McGuinness. Seriously, that was where was that knock hill? I think you went to John. You know, yeah. I mean, I wonder how, how th- they must have felt exactly the same way the guys that John were raced against the other week to get his mountain course license thing. They must have thought, I'm on the same blinking track as Mike Halewood, I'm on the same track as John McGuinness. It, it must have been awestruck for these guys who were just starting at their career to have a gentleman like that on the track with them, wasn't it? Yeah, these, these were high-profile meetings. They weren't, they weren't quite mm, club meetings that we were doing after that. They, who, they were the national yeah, championship. Yeah. But there were still um, guys so who were starting to become oh, oh, good, good racers, weren't they? Yeah. And in the TT. Mm. But you were talking before about the, the crowds that came. Mm. Um, I mean, I've been coming to the TT for years and years, even before that and after that. And I've never seen the grandstands absolutely full on practice days. Mm. And there was a lot of animosity against poor old Phil Reid, and I quite like Phil Reid. And it... All the trouble between people saying Phil and Mike were at Logheads. They were, they were the best of friends, really. And we had a lot of fun together. And we spent the whole of the time. And Phil didn't handle it very well when Mike came back. Because when he walked past the grandstand, everybody booed, which I didn't really like. Mm. And when Mike walked past, everybody cheered. And there was a, a lot of one-sided things with there. So I spent the whole of the red time. I said, well, I'll support you, Phil. And I had a Phil Reed T-shirt on which I spent the whole of the race wearing a Phil Reed T-shirt in the pits, pitting for Mike. Mm. So th- that was a sort of a novel, novel thing. I was never very good at self-promotion, really. Mm. I <laughs> hope it was a fireproof Phil Reed T-shirt in this day and age. You know, <laughs> Beth, what have you got? Any more coming in there? Yep, keep got those messages coming in. Uh, there in. is a cat watching us in Balaf. Okay. Hello to that. One double six, one double seven. Start your message with TT. Email studio at radio TT dot com. Follow us on the Max Radio TT Facebook and Twitter pages. We are Facebook living as well. Uh, John, a message for you 
review from Donna, who says, uh, best of luck to John from your biggest fan, Guy Costello from Scaries, who turned six in a couple of weeks, <laughs> which is just lovely. Um, lovely. Do you know what we've been obsessed with mm, this week? Okay. The weather, okay? It's, we have been talking about it non-stop. I just wonder, Steve, can you remember what the weather was like back in 1978? Fantastic. Mm. The, t- the tarmac was melting mm-hmm. <laughs> that year. No, the weather was just fantastic. Everything was fantastic. There was nothing that wasn't good. If anybody has got one of those Mike the Bike hats, we want to see it, okay? So we oh. want a picture that's sent in. <laughs> Chris Williams, who is uh, now doing Carnaby Street on the other side of Manx Radio, which is like a, a, a tribute to Carnaby Street, the, the 60s and stuff, he said he's got one somewhere, but he can't remember if it's here or if it's down at his mum's house. I think it's down near Kent somewhere or something like that. So if anybody has one of those hats... I hope I see one up here at the Grandstand. <laughs> oh, David, I'm, where's yours, Dave? I'm kicking myself because I, I, I lent it to mum. I've got two at home, I think. And I lent one to mum a couple of months ago. To take some photographs take some of. some photographs of. Oh. And I said a couple of days ago, must remember to bring those hats. Oh, oh dear. Oh. Oh. i tell you, somebody else Oops. who's um, kicking themselves is Daniel's uncle, who had a Mike Halewood replica and is still gutted he sold it. Oh, okay. um, we've also had uh, a message in from Gary and Jax, who says, I can't remember what I did 10 minutes ago, but that day back in 1978, age 12, I will never forget. Mike was and will always be my all-time hero. We were sat on Sulby Strait with my dad. Mike was tucked right in behind Phil, ready to pounce. The rest is history. Mm. We saw him as well at Mallory, where Mike won again. Good luck to John and also to Ian on John Chapman's MV. Here's to a safe day's racing. And David, I just wonder for Gary you... Gary Dickinson, that is, uh, John. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. For you hearing that sort of message, I mean, how does that make you feel? Oh, well, it gets you right there. It really does. Um, uh, I mean, I've ridden Dad's bike quite a few times. I've ridden it at Goodwood. I, I rode it here in the island many, many years ago. I think um, probably the slowest lap time in TT history of something like <laughs> 45 minutes uh, I came in I, I remember mum standing there sweating loads thinking oh god he's fallen off again <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> again <laughs> no we don't, don't we don't go there uh, no uh, we don't go there uh, so yeah I mean to be back again is to have John actually be able to go out and give it some stick you know uh, something I wouldn't I wouldn't do John's a racer I'm a, I'm a road rider um but um, hopefully uh, uh, I'll be able to get out on something very, very similar. The gentleman who was gutted, he'd sold his Halewood replica. Um, he might be able to have a chance of another piece of history because <laughs> this weekend uh, we are launching the new V2 Halewood machines. So if he would like another little piece of history, he can come <laughs> up and put a deposit on one. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's making them for you? Um, uh, Company, <laughs> company called V2 company. Australia. Okay, yes. yes. Tell by, us a story, yeah. By, um, I couldn't find you then. <laughs> Brooke Henry and John Keogh. Um, and it's been quite a project. Um, uh, Brooke Henry uh, of, of V2 has the has the rights of the... Well, is it Steve, you probably should I, know should I, about should this. Should I say something yeah, about Steve, that? Go on. <laughs> Steve... <laughs> You see, I'm never good at the technical stuff. I always hand that over to the chairs. Okay, Brooke's been making <laughs> parts for old old Ducatis for, for quite a number of years, probably 20, 30 years. And because they're no longer available, they're obsolete now. And he managed to find the people that made all the original castings for the engine, for the crankcase, everything in Italy. And he bought them. So he's making, these are exact replicas made with the original casting. They only made 20, they only made 20 of these machines altogether. So he's managed to find all the castings, machine tools and everything. And he's produced an absolute... Le- he's been driving me mad. <laughs> <laughs> Emailing me all the time and said, well, where did this screw and what shape was that? And who put that little hole in the fairing and all this kind of... So he's absolutely made a, an, an identical replica of the original bike that Mike rode. It's all the same colours, same stickers. But talking about replicas, um, they actually planned to do, after Mike had won the race, the Ducati factory were going bankrupt. Mm. And they had hundreds, if not thousands, mm. of machines they couldn't sell because they were old-fashioned and hundred come along with four cylinders and things and nobody wanted them. They were going the same way as the British bike industry. And after Mike won the race, they copied it, painted it red and green and white and put all the stickers on and everything and they they actually sold the original plan was to make 200 replicas in the end they made seven and a half thousand Mike mm-hmm. Hayward replicas the back of that. Wow. they mm-hmm. then made another 2,000 evolutions Saved Hayward evolutions the company. Yeah. And Which it was all sold out within three minutes. Yeah, the evolution. Oh. It was absolutely fantastic. And to put it in context, um, Carl Fogarty, who won his World 
first world supermarket on my bike. I was preparing mm, the bikes yeah. for him. They made 200 replicas and they were struggling to sell the last 50. And that's how, that's how much Mike um, was favoured in, in over everybody else. It was just fantastic. And it actually, it actually saved the Ducati factory from going bankrupt. Wow. So it was a lot bigger event than yes, people yeah, yeah, yeah. realised. Yeah, you know, just winning the bike race. Yeah, just yeah. winning the one yeah. race and so on. What have you got there, Elizabeth? Well, it is the Max Sunday Radio name. TT chat. No, don't. I'm not in trouble. I'm not in no. trouble. Um, it is the Max Radio TT chat show. We've got the all-important full weather forecast from mm. the Met Office coming up in just a moment. Do keep your messages coming in. One double six, one double seven. Start them with TT or email studio at radiott.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. And uh, don't forget, John McGuinness is doing a little lap. This afternoon, about quarter to four, uh, the Mike Halewood lap. So uh, just incredible day. Uh, keep your thoughts on that coming in. We'll be back in just a moment.